Welcome back to Central Valley Talk, COVID edition. Uh, every day is COVID edition. Now we're talking about what, how COVID's affecting you. Are you able to go to work? Are you uh, uh, teaching your kids at home? Are you able to buy groceries? Or do you have COVID? We, we want to hear about that, too. If you have a COVID story, we want you on our show. We want to talk about it. Uh, is it even a real thing or is it a hoax? Well, we've been having a lot of guests on that say this is no hoax because they've had it and it's been bad. Now, uh, one thing we've been looking around for is resources to help people who are affected by COVID. We've invited a couple special guests in today, uh, Lowell Inns and Roger Slingerman, Roger from the UCP, and Lowell from... Exceptional Parents Unlimited. Exceptional Parents Unlimited. Now, you have, you each represent, you're all on the screen now, by the way, you each represent uh, special populations or work with special populations. Are there resources available, special there, resources? There are. We are part of a coalition of six agencies, came together working with the County of Fresno's Public Health Department uh, to put together some resources for individuals with disabilities and their families that have been impacted by COVID. Right. Now, it's you, uh, Exceptional Parents, and of course, uh, United Cerebral Palsy, Roger Slingerman, a couple other organizations? Four other great organizations, Easter Seals of Central California, Valley Center for the Blind, the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Service Center here in Fresno, and Resources for Independent Central Valley. Right. Now, as I understand, the federal government gave money to either the state or the county of Fresno, but somehow this pile of cash is sitting there at the, cow uh, at the county and it's waiting to help people. Who's it going to help? So in our case, uh, the county is working with us as a coalition to work with individuals with disabilities, and we uh, work together to put together a coalition that pretty much represents a, kind of a broad spectrum of individuals uh, within that category. Uh, so we're working with, uh, for example, uh, a family who has a child who's on the autism spectrum. Uh, we have Roger and his team working with adults with disabilities. We have uh, a team that's working with individuals that are uh, in the youth category, uh, individuals that are, are vision or hearing impaired. And so we wanted to make sure that we had everybody covered uh, that we could think of that might be in impacted by a positive COVID case. And who would qualify for this resource? Somebody has to have the COVID. Well, in, in, in our case, it's a kind of a three-part uh, program that we're working with the county on. The first part is outreach and education. We wanted to make sure that the information that the county and other resources, CDC and the state, were putting out around COVID, what are the best, best uh, practices that you can follow to make sure that you protect yourself and, and keep your family healthy. We want to make sure that that information was accessible to families. So each of our organizations is trying to reach the population that we normally serve to help them understand what those resources are. Some of us in the coalition are helping the county with contact tracing. So for example, if you had an individual who was uh, vision impaired, the county may not have all the, the staff members and the, and the resources on their end to, to make sure that they can follow those procedures. And so our team is helping with that. And then finally, we have some resources from the county, from this funding, uh, to provide quarantine supports. So we can uh, provide some financial uh, benefits to families that are directly impacted by a positive COVID case. Right. Now, and I don't, I have not got my arms around what happens if somebody with a special need uh, uh, de develops COVID or their caretaker develops COVID. Mm -hmm. They want to stay apart, I would imagine. Quarantine? So in our, in our case, we came together uh, late July. We've been working with the county to put together a contract and put these resources in place. And part of the idea behind our project was uh, to identify families that might need this resource. And it could be as simple as my respite care uh, person uh, has contracted COVID and so they cannot provide support for my family unit or mom or dad uh, right. may have contracted COVID and now they can't provide the same level of supports uh, to their child with, with a disability or uh, God forbid the, the individual with a disability does contract COVID. Right. There's gonna be some special nuances to how we work with those families and, and our team is ready uh, and willing to support the county and their public health officials to support those families. Okay. And where, if somebody's watching this and they want to ask a question, or they want to try to access or get some help, where do they start? This is a great, uh, great organization uh, that is helping us out with this. Valley Center for the Blind is taking all the calls for the coalition. Okay. They have an 800 number, and hopefully that's going to be on the screen it's here. It's on the screen, yes. 
and uh, we have a great website. You can go to that website. You can actually contact any of our organizations. We wanted to make sure that it was easy for people to contact the organization they trust directly if they want to, or they can enter their information on that website. There's a form there that they can fill out. Again, Valley Center for the Blind will take that information. They'll distribute it to the appropriate agency. Where it needs to go. We have a great flyer on the screen. But let me, let me say this. Uh, I, think I would say the Dis Disability Equity Project, and I'm going to give you the phone number in just a second, and uh, that would be 888-468-9115, or go to uh, DEP. Fresno.org. It's a disability equity project. Roger, uh, with UCP, what do you have to add for us? Well, I all did a great job of explaining. Uh, we got involved. That we want to help people with disabilities, and we, you know, we serve a lot of the adult programs within Fresno County. There's well over 5,000 people with uh, adults with disabilities in Fresno County. We're just one of the agencies, but. Uh, we are a resource now to help uh, support families and be able to do that. We also have a, a number that they can contact us directly if they have an ad with, uh, adult with disabilities um, as well. I don't know the number offhand. I know we have an email as well, but they can call the 800 number and get to us. But uh, this is uh, really Lowell and the group from EPU that really put this together to help us not only people with disabilities that have uh, developmental disabilities like our program and the children's program that uh, Lowell's working with, but all the types of different disabilities and all different types of minorities in the community. So it's it's a needed resource, and uh, we're looking forward to it. And so we're, we're doing it through the end of December, but looks like it might extend till, to June and July. And at that point, we'll, uh, we'll continue to make sure we help the people that need the support. Yeah. Now, I have been a lot in a, involved in a lot of these big budgetary kind of things, and a lot of things have happened to us this year. We've had the fires, mm -hmm. we have COVID, and then we had this crazy election period, which has kind of stopped the money flow. And we hope we're going to get some more money to help the economy and help people who need help. But the money now that's in place, does that need to be disposed of by the end of the year? It does. It's, it's, uh, it's ending December 31st unless something changes. Uh, we've been in conversations with, with the county because they realize that COVID is not stopping on December 31st, right. and so they want to make sure that the support continues. So we're in conversations with them right now about trying to extend uh, this resource to the community. And again, we, we kind of got, uh, I guess, a, a little bit of a late start here. We started really working on this probably around September. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to get the information out to everybody in a short amount of time, but we're trying to do that. We want to make sure people are aware of this resource. It doesn't work for everybody. We're going to, we're going to analyze each case and make sure that it fits our, our criteria and our, our program. Uh, but definitely want to make sure that we're providing the education and outreach to families that may need it. And they may need a special way of looking at the situation. And, and maybe we can help out with that. But maybe you can work something out. I mean, there, maybe there's not a straight-ahead program. But if there's someone who needs help, they should call the number and find out. Definitely. And it definitely. Looks, sounds like you guys will bend over backwards to see how you can help somebody. And uh, it sounds like the person with the special need doesn't have to have COVID, but someone in their circle or somehow mm -hmm. being infected by COVID. Right. Or they might have COVID. <laughs> Right, right. It, it'll, it, it, each, each case is different. Um, that's the great thing about having six organizations. Uh, each of us can look at the situation and say, hey, we, I, EPU might look at it and say, this is a better, better situation or case for, for Roger to handle at UCP. We'll hand it off, and they can then look at it individually and say, is this an individual with a disability who might, because of complicating circumstances, right. uh, because of COVID, they may, may need extended uh, time uh, and resources and support, so we can help them with that. How about the very case that maybe they can't function in society right now because they can't go to a grocery store, they can't get their hair cut, they can't get their needs taken care of? I mean, maybe not even having COVID, but just being massively affected. Maybe there might be a need there. We want to help those families. We want to help them know about what the resources are that are available to them. There are a lot of resources in our community, food distribution, uh, other resources that are available. We're not sure that everybody understands what those resources are. And then in some cases, like, uh, for example, with Roger, we've been talking about transportation. Mm -hmm. If they need transportation to get to those food distributions or they need that food brought to them, to them we want to help. Well, something. So it's doesn't have to be totally worked out. Call, and these organizations will help work it out. Well. You'll send them to the right person. And they can start just by going to that uh, web address, I guess, depfresno.org, disabilityequityproject.org. Call the main number, 888-468-9115. Roger, last thoughts? 
No, I just want to thank, thank you, Mike, for uh, having us on the show. And you, you've been a big supporter of not only UCP but other programs with disabilities. And, and this is a great resource to get this information out. We do a lot of this information through Facebook, and we've sent it on YouTube and sent it through our emails. And it reaches an awful lot of people. And we want to thank Central Valley Talk for being able to host us today and keep us keep us in mind when we keep going forward as this doesn't change or keeps changing. Well, thank you, Roger, for what you do. Uh, Lowell, the last thoughts? Same as Roger. I really appreciate the opportunity it's to be here today and uh, share this information with our community. All right. Uh, it is the uh, Disability Equity Project. There's a phone number on the screen, 888-468-9115, and the web address, depfresno.com. DEPFresno.org. I'm going to keep this information on my desk here at Central Valley Talk. If you didn't get this written down or you want to refer somebody and you don't have the number, call us here at Central Valley Talk and I'll give you the number and the information. We'll be back with more Central Valley Talk right after this.